Hey guys, so I just crashed my Balsa DLG into a tree, which caused some of the denting in the wing. And on the way down, it cracked even more, which explains these cracks throughout the leading edge of the wing. So in this video, I'll um, do a compilation of a few clips which I'll take throughout the process of fixing this. From the cracks in the pod, to the dents in the wing, the cracks in the wing, and how I'm going to address the reason it crashed, which was that. Look at that, my rudder servo, the servo horn came off the servo. So what I'll probably do is use one of the screws I have that doesn't fit and drill it out until it does fit. So that's my plan. It'll be a quick little fix, just take an hour or two, and it'll be back up in the air, just like new. So here it right. goes. So as the first step in the process of fixing this aircraft, I will be fixing the cracks that you will notice are running along the leading edge of the wing. There's one there, which starts there and kind of works its way down to about there-ish. And then there's one very small one over here. You can kind of see where it's began at that dent, and it goes down a bit. Um, so I'll be using Jet CA glue. It can be purchased for a very good price on EasyBuiltModels.com. In fact, you get a 25% discount when purchasing two, which I highly recommend because Two bottles of glue go quite fast if you actually fly your planes at all. Um, and accelerant, because really, the CA glue does not get 100% of its bonding strength just from curing. So, to get the most strength right away, such that knocks and bumps won't knock your pieces out of line as they fully cure, is a good thing to do. So you want to accelerate your glue whenever you possibly can, especially if you're fixing something so important as the leading edge. Because if something like that were to get at an improper angle of attack when glued, that wouldn't be good. So I'll be using accelerant and thick, uh, sorry, medium and thin viscosity Jet CA glue to fix the cracks in the leading edge of the wing. And I'll go do that now and I'll be back when okay, I'm Okay, the first crack is fixed and looks pretty good. You really can't even tell it was cracked unless you looked. Um, Next thing to do is fix the other crack. Alright, both cracks fixed. That was pretty straightforward. You just hold the pieces of wood together, you drop a drop of CA in between them, and you hit them with accelerant, and you're done. Really, really simple. Took me like a minute, quite literally. Um, next step. Do you see these dents in the wing? Here's the thing. A glider actually flies pretty much fine with dents in the wing. I mean, when I had my UMX Whippet, I flew that thing to death. It had so many dents in the wing, and I was still getting a good 40, uh, 40 seconds of airtime. So, yeah, they'll fly fine with dents. But I am going to try to get these dents out, because one thing I've noticed about this aircraft is that the aspect ratio is definitely not what it should be. It's too low, and that's causing an, a bad, an improper ratio between the amount of leading edge length and the amount of surface area which is causing an excess amount of skin drag, which basically is a fancy way of saying it doesn't fly well. So if I remove enough wood to make those dents non-existent, I will be decreasing the aspect ratio, and also, if I'm smart about it, I could increase the taper ratio a little bit, which will decrease my tip losses. As you see, I have a little bit of square area on the tip there, which is causing me to experience some pretty severe tip losses with this glider, such as tip vortices, which is inducing a lot of drag, and that's not very good. Also, I've noticed it's a little bit tail-heavy, and generally what that means is there's too much lift lifting the nose up. So if I remove some of the leading edge area, that will remove some of the lift from the nose. It's very close in on the moment arm, so it's not going to remove much, but I think it will um, correct for the very, very slight tail-heavy tendency I've been noticing with this aircraft. Furthermore, it will allow me to do a proper stand foil leading edge when I recut the leading edge and resand it. Um, so, all in all, it'll be a good idea for me to take those dents out, although, like I say, it would fly fine with them there. So, I'll go get that leading edge fixed up, and I'll be back when right, I'm done. so now as you see, I have this piece which I've cut off the leading edge of the wing, which has the dents in it. The way I did this is I measured the depth of the dents, and made a few marks a little over an eighth of an inch farther in than that, along the wing leading edge, in between the dents, and then sort of connected the dots with my X-Acto blade, following the curve of the wing, and got this nice little piece. Now you may be wondering to yourself, what's it going to do with it? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and put it on there, and CA glue it with a couple dabs of glue throughout, flush with the leading edge of this wing, 
Then I'll cut around it and cut off both parts glued together, and those I will scrap. That will make sure that the cut I'm making will be even on both wings. Okay, so I wasn't exactly sure how clear I made that, talking about glue and this doodad, that doohickey, and scrapping this thingamajig, so I'll just show you what I've done here. So I've glued the leading edge scrap from this wing, which had the dents, onto this wing, which doesn't have the dents, but nonetheless needs to match this wing. And so you see it's glued on there, and now I'll cut it off with my knife, and that will make both leading edges even. And that'll work quite nicely. So, all right. Here I so go. I've done the cutting, and as you might notice, please don't notice it. It's not actually that even. Um, I kind of messed up, but it's all right. It's like an eighth of an inch of um, problem space. It's not that bad, but they're just a little. I don't want to talk about it. Um. Anyway, so I messed up, and it looks all right. So. Time to do the Stan Foil Leading Edge. Now you may be wondering, who's this Stan character, and what's he got to do with aluminum foil? No, it's nothing like that. Stan Budenbaum is, um, world record holder in F1N, indoor glider category. And also I think he might do some outdoor hand launch glider, I'm not sure, but... Point being, he has this airfoil that there's, a, there's an article on in DiscusKid.com. That's DiscusKid.com. Uh, and he calls it the Stan Foil, because his name's Stan, and it's an airfoil. Um... I know, big shocker. And the 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 main thing about it is this leading edge he, he designed. Um, not really designed. It'd been uh, played around with in the model glider community for a while. But basically, what he says is that a lead, leading edge where the top, instead of being rounded, is a straight angle down to a point. He says that's the best leading edge. And model glider build builders have known this for a while. But he was the first person to kind of like put it out there, like this is concretely the best way to do it. Do it this way. So. That's the kind of leading edge I'm talking about when I refer to it that way. With a flat top, not a rounded top. That actually works a lot better. And then you round the bottom, and the top should go a little further back in its taper than the bottom. Um, and also I might mess around with the trailing edge of the airfoil, because it needs a little more taper there. Uh, you'll notice there's this crack here. That was from earlier, because this DLG is really old. So, yeah. Time to do that leading so edge. So I've done the stand foil leading edge, and as you can see here, if I hold it at the right angle to the light... Hmm to get this. Ah, there we go. See, it's all flat. It should go back a little further, but the wing's so thin that if I go back any further, it'll be very non-resistant to dings. It'll be chipped easily because it will be so thin for so long. So I had to make that a sharper angle. Also, I've sanded the whole wing uh, top and bottom with uh, P600 grit sandpaper. And next step is I'm just going to see if I have a screw to fit, to get that servo horn on very snugly, and if I don't, I'll just take a screw um, that doesn't fit and like kind of try to thread it through the um, servo horn until it does, if it's too big. Uh, and then after that, I think there are a couple little dents in the tail. All right, so, so yeah, the fixing is finished, and as you can hear, it's turned on. Servos are straining with all their worth to keep those surfaces straight as an arrow. And this is actually the first time I've tested it. I've got my DX8 here, and let's see. There's elevator. Let's go over here to check it and make sure it is really going down and up. Alrighty, and rudder. I'm liking it. Okay, and as you see, I've got a nice screw that I forced in there with all my might. Barely fits, but it sort of fits. And I've put a new piece of sheeting um, on this nose, if I can show this. Yeah, new piece of sheeting curved around the nose there. Doesn't look great, but actually it should work pretty well because it's real nice and smooth. Um, so yeah, time for a test flight. Let's go. All right, so we're here in the Spittle Land behind my house for a test flight. Uh, the Spittle Land backs up very conveniently to these nasty tangles of trees and vines, which were the original, quite literal, downfall of this plane, <laughs> to get my pun. Um, the wind's picking up a bit, but it is kind of in wind shadow, so I've got it turned on here. Let's just do a control check. Left, right, up, down. Just a bit, just a bit of toss here. Definitely better. Let me go get it. I'll just give it a couple more tosses and we'll call it good. Yeah, because the wind's definitely picking up.
once more and I'll call it a day. Now, wait for that wind to die down for a second. Just hold tight. And yeah, the gust's coming through, so I'll just wait. Then in a bit it'll, it'll be passed. Alright, it's good as gonna get. Yeah. Well, it's not broken and it flies.